Full versus para. When we're talking virtualization, what's the difference? Full virtualization and para virtualization. These are the two primary types of server virtualization, and they vary based on their respective levels of isolation they offer. But first, what is virtualization? Learn the basics by clicking the link above or in the description below. With full virtualization, often just virtualization, VMs run independently, each with its own OS and configuration. They don't communicate or share resources, so they're highly portable. Full virtualization doesn't require OS modification and provides complete, secure isolation between VMs. But on the downside, apps that require direct access to the hardware won't function properly in a VM, and any physical server fault can affect every VM running on the system. Paravirtualization, more notably in the early days of hypervisors and virtualization, offers improved performance, easier backups, faster migrations, improved server consolidation, and reduced power consumption. But since admins must modify the OS, paravirtualization limits OS options for an enterprise. It's less portable than full virtualization. The partial isolation can pose security risks, and there's no reliable way to predict performance gains. For most, the disadvantages of paravirtualization largely overshadow its benefits when compared to full virtualization. Paravirtualization is generally relegated to experimental or niche use cases, while full virtualization is the de facto standard for most of the industry. What do you think? Have you used paravirtualization? Tell us about your experiences in the comments below, and please hit that like button.